Welcome to part three of this video series on the solo growth model. In the previous video, I showed you how to find the steady state of the solo growth model. In this video, I will go over some experiments with the steady state. In particular, what would happen if there was a permanent increase in the savings rate? What if there was a permanent change in the depreciation rate of capital? What if there was a permanent change in technology or total factor productivity? So those are some of the questions I'll be answering in this video. To begin this analysis, let's go ahead and start with some review. In particular, let's start off with the equation that defines the law of motion for capital, also known as the capital accumulation equation. And I will be writing this in per capita terms. So on the left-hand side, we have the change in capital between periods. So basically this is a change in capital per capita between period T and T plus one. And that is equal to investment minus depreciation, where investment is equal to the savings rate times GDP per capita, which GDP per capita is just equal to the production function in per capita terms, where I'm assuming that the production function exhibits constant returns to scale, which implies that this alpha parameter is between zero and one. So investment minus depreciation. So depreciation is just delta, which is the depreciation rate, times capital per capita. So now I would like to actually graph these two functions on the right-hand side. In particular, I want to graph investment and depreciation all on the same graph here. So on the horizontal axis, we will have capital per capita, and the vertical axis can represent multiple variables. So first I'll go ahead and start by graphing depreciation. So this is just delta times KT. So this is just a linear function. So it will be a straight line starting at the origin with a slope equal to delta. This other function here, so investment, it's the savings rate times the production function. Because alpha is between zero and one, this function is going to look like this. So it's basically going to look like the square root of x if you were to graph that. Um, so this is investment. So a steady state occurs when all endogenous variables of the model are constant. So if that's the case, so if we are in a steady state, well then the change in capital per capita between periods must be equal to zero. That would imply that in a steady state, investment equals depreciation. So, so the investment curve should intersect the depreciation line at our steady state, which is at that point right there. So this will give us the steady state level of capital per capita, which I will go ahead and call K star, which I know that's an ugly star, but don't judge it. Okay, so if we wanna actually find a closed form solution for capital, per capita in a steady state. I actually went through the details of that in the previous video. I'll go ahead and write down what a result was. So the steady state level of capital per capita was equal to S times A over delta, all raised to the power one over one minus alpha. So now that we've adequately reviewed the steady state, what would happen if there was an increase in the savings rate? And let's also assume that that increase in the savings rate is permanent. So specifically, let's go ahead and write this down. What would happen if the savings rate was permanently changed from S to S prime, where S prime is greater than S? How would that alter the new, how would that alter the steady state and how would we get to that new steady state? So that's what I want to start by answering here. So if we go ahead and first look at the steady state capital per capita, well, we can see that this is an increasing function of S, right? Because S is in the numerator. You can also take the partial derivative of capital per capita in a steady state with respect to S if you would like to prove that to yourself the sign of that would be positive. So the new steady state level of capital per capita could be greater than the old level. So how exactly would we get there? Well, let's go ahead and see which of these two curves will be affected by the change in the savings rate. So clearly the, de the depreciation line will not be affected because it does not involve the savings rate. 
However, investment will be affected because it directly involves the savings rate. So if we were to increase S, how would that affect this curve? Well, it would shift this curve upward. So we would get something that looks something like this. This is gonna be an ugly drawing, but make do. So basically, this is our new investment curve. This is gonna look really ugly, I apologize, but we'll put S prime times A K T to the alpha. So our new steady state is going to be at this point right here. And let's use the very creative name of K double star to indicate our new steady state level of capital per capita, which is clearly greater than the old steady state level of capital per capita. So how exactly do we get from our old steady state to our new steady state? Well, this isn't going to happen overnight. It's gonna take a little bit of time. And let me show you why that's the case. So going back to the law of motion for capital, in a steady state, I showed you that the change in capital between periods is clearly equal to zero because there's no growth in the model in a steady state. And therefore, investment was equal to depreciation. If we were to increase the savings rate, well, in that case, investment would actually be greater than depreciation. So in particular, let's go ahead and evaluate the right-hand side with the new savings rate, but at our steady state values for capital. So specifically, we're looking at the new savings rate, S prime, and that will be multiplied by our production function, but evaluated at the steady state. And clearly investment in a steady state with this new savings rate is going to be greater than depreciation in our old steady state, right? So what this is going to imply is that there will be a positive change in capital between periods. So now capital will actually grow because investment is outpacing depreciation for the time being. So we'll end up on this new curve and Again, the gap between the investment curve and the depreciation line is the change in capital between periods. But if you look here, that gap is going to decrease over time, right? And that occurs because, well, there are two reasons, right? So one, because we have a positive depreciation rate, and two, we have constant returns to scale production, which means that there are diminishing returns to capital per capita as we increase um, the amount of capital in the economy. So eventually what does happen is we converge to this new steady state, but it could be multiple periods in the future before we reach this new steady state. So very quickly, we can also answer the question as to what happens if there is a decrease in the savings rate. So if there is a decrease in the savings rate, our investment curve would instead shift downward. So let's go ahead and say it shifts somewhere down like that. And let's say this savings rate is S double prime. I know, very creative, right? So we have that here. And our new steady state will be lower than our initial steady state. Let's go ahead and call this K triple star. So we will actually have a decrease in our steady state, which should be no surprise, right? Because if you are decreasing your savings rate, you'll be investing less, and so you end up with a lower capital per capita in a steady state. And the dynamics work the same way here as they did previously, except in this particular case, investment is being outpaced by depreciation, but eventually investment does catch up and we converge to this new steady state. So we know what happens to capital per capita following a permanent increase to the savings rate. What happens to our remaining endogenous variables of the model, in particular GDP per capita, investment per capita, and consumption per capita? Well, for the first two variables, that answer is relatively straightforward. For consumption per capita, it's not as straightforward. So let's go ahead and first start with GDP per capita. So in particular, let's study this in our new steady state, which I'll go ahead and call this Y double star. So this is our new steady state level of GDP per capita. And that is equal to the production function evaluated at 
our new steady state value for capital per capita? Well, we know that a double star is strictly greater than K star. So clearly this is an increase in terms of the capital term here. And nothing else on the right hand side changes. So this implies that the new steady state value of GDP per capita is greater than the old steady state value of GDP per capita. So now what happens to investment per capita? Recall that investment per capita, well, I'm going to write this in steady state terms, is equal to the savings rate, which in this case, we're dealing with the new savings rate. And we also have the new value of GDP per capita. So this is a higher savings rate than our initial savings rate. And this is a higher GDP per capita in our new steady state. So that implies that investment per capita is higher in our new steady state. So that leaves us with one more variable, which is consumption per capita. So consumption per capita in our new steady state is going to be equal to the other fraction of GDP, which is one minus S prime times the new steady state value of GDP per capita. So this term right here is higher than it was before, right? Because we are at a higher level of GDP per capita in our new steady state. However, this term, well, this term is actually lower than it was before because one minus a higher savings rate is a lower value than one minus our old savings rate. So we have one term that's increasing and one term that's decreasing. So it's actually indeterminate whether or not consum consumption per capita has increased or decreased. We actually would need to plug in numbers and find a numerical solution for that. And then we can analyze that. So I'll be covering this particular issue in a future video where we'll actually be discussing the optimal level of the savings rate if the goal is to maximize consumption. So again, that's gonna be a topic for a later video. The next example I would like to go over is a permanent decrease in the depreciation rate of capital. So specifically, let's go ahead and assume that the depreciation rate moves from delta to delta prime where delta prime is strictly less than delta. So this is a decrease in the rate of depreciation of capital. So how will that alter our steady state? So this is going to clearly affect the depreciation line. It will not affect the investment curve because the investment curve does not involve the depreciation rate. Specifically, it will actually rotate the depreciation line downward. So basically it's going to have a smaller slope and that slope is just delta prime now, right? Or delta prime is strictly less than delta. And so what happens is we actually have a higher steady state level of capital per capita. And let's go ahead and call that K double star. And the way by which we actually reach this new steady state is similar to how we reached in the case where we have an increase in the savings rate. So in particular, as you can see here, as depreciation is decreased and the depreciation line um, is lowered here, what ends up happening is that at our initial steady state value of capital, it turns out that investment is outpacing depreciation. Specifically, if we evaluate investment at our old steady state as follows, it's strictly greater than depreciation at our steady state, but with our new depreciation rate, right? So what ends up happening is we have this wedge between investment and depreciation, but that wedge diminishes over time as capital grows, and eventually we converge to this new steady state. And again, remember, this wedge diminishes because of the fact that our production function exhibits constant returns to scale, which implies there are diminishing returns to increasing capital. Let's now quickly go over what happens to the remaining endogenous variables of the model. 
So we know that capital per capita increases going from our old steady state to our new steady state. So what happens to GDP per capita? Well, GDP per capita also increases in this case because remember, GDP per capita is an increasing function of capital per capita. Similarly, we know that investment per capita is also increasing because investment per capita is just the savings rate times GDP per capita, and GDP per capita is the only thing increasing in that product. Therefore, investment increases. And finally, recall that consumption per capita is just equal to one minus S times GDP per capita, and I'm evaluating this at our new steady state. The only variable on the right-hand side that changes is GDP per capita, which is increasing. The savings rate isn't changing in this case. Therefore, it follows that consumption per capita in our new steady state is higher than it was in the original steady state. The last example I would like to cover is a permanent increase in total factor productivity. In particular, total factor productivity is the parameter A from our production function. And suppose this increases to a new value A prime, where obviously A prime is greater than A. So how will this affect our steady state? So this is only going to affect our investment curve because A only appears in our investment curve. So increasing A will actually shift the investment curve upward as follows, where the new investment curve is S times A prime times KT to the power alpha. And this intersects the depreciation line at a higher point. So we actually end up with a higher level of capital per capita in a new steady state, which I will call K double star. And again, in this case, what we have here is that investment outpaces depreciation. So we have a wedge between investment and depreciation. And that wedge over time will decrease as capital per capita increases because of the fact that our production function exhibits constant returns to scale, implying diminishing returns to capital. So that's why we end up at this new steady state. So what happens to our remaining variables of this model? Let's go ahead and evaluate that very quickly. So let's start off with GDP per capita. So in this case, GDP per capita is equal to A prime times K in our new steady state raised to the power alpha, this is clearly a higher value, and this is clearly a higher value. Therefore, it follows that GDP per capita in our new steady state is higher than it was before because of the increase in total factor productivity. That should make perfect sense because basically we're saying that technology in this particular example is better than it was before, and so production increases in our steady state. Similarly, investment per capita, which is equal to the savings rate times GDP per capita, must clearly also increase because GDP per capita is increasing, whereas the savings rate is unchanged. Therefore, investment per capita in our new steady state is higher than it was in our old steady state. And finally, we have consumption per capita in our new steady state which is one minus S times GDP per capita in our new steady state, where the latter term clearly increases and one minus S is unchanged. Therefore, consumption per capita is higher in our new steady state than it was in our old steady state.